Good evening and welcome to the Elida Fieldhouse for tonight's matchup between the Shawnee Indians and the Elida Bulldogs. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Scott Mag. And Scott, opening weekend at the Fieldhouse looks a little bit different this year, but we still have an excellent matchup tonight. Yeah, absolutely. We got uh, Elida coming up playing their second game and Shawnee the first one. LCC still playing football, but yeah, we're still gonna have a good one here tonight. Let's take a look at tonight, keys of the game. Keys of the game first, uh, identity, right? Because Shawnee's been practicing for three, three and a half weeks. What's their identity going to be, right? They, they come out, they get practice, you practice, you practice. What's your identity? You've got different teams, maybe different from last year. They may be up, up full court. They maybe want to guard. It doesn't know. We'll find out here in a little bit what identity is. And Elida coming with a new coach. There again, they got to find their identity. New guy, new way of doing things, new twist to the program. They also got to come with their identity. Along with that, number two is execution. With that new identity, new team, new year, you got to execute what the coach wants to do. And last but not least, tempo. Both teams kind of want to go up and down. Their coaches really like to get up and down a little bit. I think the, the team that can control that tempo tonight comes away victorious. It is opening weekend. We have an excellent matchup on the way. Stay right here. When we return, we'll have the opening tip and starting lineups right here on WOSN. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Scott Mag, and we are just about underway here for the tip-off classic. Second night, Shawnee and Elida take a look at our officials, Stephen McCrary, Scott Norse, and Rodney Stinson. And take a look at the starters first for Shawnee. Number 12, Austin Miller. Number five, Toby Freiberger. Number 24, Brady Gabes. Number 22, Nick Pazon. And number zero, Will McBride. And for Elida, they're going to start number 22, Bryce Engel. Number zero, Zori Island. Number 31, David Etzcorn. Number two, Tori Thomas. And number 13, Jackson Kovalt. Take a look at the rest of the Shawnee lineup there as we are just about underway. And Scott, we mentioned in the Lock Sky Practic pregame, you know, it looks a little different this year. LCC still playing football right now. They're actually playing tonight. By the time most people have watched this, I already know the outcome of that game. So they had to kind of modify some things. You know, you have just Shawnee, Elida, and Bath. Elida and Bath played last night. Elida and Shawnee, JB gets a chance to play in the evenings, which is kind of different. But at the end of the day, they were still able to kind of come up with something. That way we could keep this uh, tradition alive, having tip-off go off. See, last year, or the last time these two teams met, February of 2022, Shawnee defeated Elida 74-56. to These two teams, though, are very different from the teams that met back in February. Absolutely. Uh, Elida with a new uh, new head regime and then maybe a do, new different way of doing things. So. I'm excited to see how this one uh, shapes out. The opening tip is going to be controlled by the Indians. Nice drive floater in the lane. Number 22, Nick Pazon scores the first points of tonight. And then all right on the other side with the comebacker. Two more points back and forth here in the opening, uh, opening minutes here as we are tied at two with 7.30 to go still here in the first quarter. Yeah, you like to really get it down the floor and they want to go in transition. A little bit different than what they have done in the past. Good move there by Miller. Uh, he was, he came on last year as a sophomore. He was kind of the guy that came in off the bench, kind of was a shooter, came in and uh, he kind of uh, shot a lot of threes, but right there he went down to the block and nice little move there by uh, Mr. Miller. So Bryce Engel was called for the foul. It's his first team's first. You see Austin Miller at the free throw line, able to connect on his first one. Austin Miller, the six foot four inch senior, coming off a successful soccer campaign where Shawnee won their first state title in, in boys soccer. He's only been playing basketball maybe a week, week and a half. Austin was able to connect on both of his free throws. Shawnee on top, four to two. Here's Zori Island up at the top of the key. Zori last night led the scoring for the Bulldogs. He had 16 points against Bath in their victory. Corner see, to set. 
see that three-pointer miss. Rebound comes down to Shawnee. Here's Miller. Lines up a three-point shot. That one's going to be short. Drops right into the hands of number 22, Bryce Engel. Engel's going to bring it up the full for Elida. Working against Miller. Gets around. Going to stop in the lane. Drops the floater for two. Bryce Engel. Here's Freiberger for the Indians. Brings the basketball up. Has it knocked away, though, as Island able to get his hands on that. Yeah. And you kind of seen a little bit Miller, you know, uh, probably has to get his basketball legs in him. I'm, I'm sure he's in shape from running all over the soccer field, but he kind of tried to reach that and tip that one behind and got himself kind of in a bad spot and end up uh, Engel got a nice open floater there in the elbow. Here's Freiberger working the left hand. Nice pass. Nice pass underneath. Brady Gabe's not able to finish. Rebound comes down to Shawnee. As Will McBride had it, but turned it over to Island. Island, he's going to drive. Had it knocked away, gathered it back in, but couldn't finish. Austin Miller comes up with the rebound. Good rim protection there by the Indians. Miller spins, kicks it back out to the corner. McBride tries to go baseline, and they're going to have a foul. This one's going to go against David Edscorn. Yeah, it, that's an easy call for the official right in front of him. That's Corn didn't like it, but when you extend your hand right there on the drive, that gives him no, no chance. He's got to call that. But Freiberger's going to inbound the ball for the Indians. Nice. He finds Miller underneath. Austin Miller, six foot four, but somehow was able to slip Austin away Miller. undetected. Was able to finish underneath on the out of bounds play. Yeah, they set a little back screen. They didn't really talk, and I think they want to go and switch it, but they didn't. Corey Thomas going to work down low. Can't get that one to fall, but he's going to go to the free throw line. Can't let a post player get that low. He was right there on the block. As you can see, right there is a little back screen. They kind of slipped it, and he came off of it. Good, good little back screen. Right here is uh, when Thomas was down low. He's that close. Nice little drop step. Scored, trying to score the basket. Made his first foul shot. Torrey Thomas makes the first one. He was fouled by Gabes. That was Gabes' first foul, Shawnee's first team foul. And Thomas' second free throw is good as well. We are tied at six. Freiberger tries to get out of some traffic. He's able to get it over to Miller. And Miller, he's going to get called for the travel. Took the extra step as he was trying to go baseline. And this ball is going to go back to the Bulldogs. Which coaches are up and down the sideline, coaching their teams really hard. It's good to see. Here goes Thomas, works off the right side, hands it off to Edscorn. Edscorn right back to Thomas. Thomas shoots the three point shot. Can't get that one to fall. Fight for the rebound. Ends up in the hands of Miller. Miller pushes it up. Gabes tries to drive, kicks it out into the corner. Almost lost the handle, but able to get it back to Freiberger. Now here's Gabes, going to reset, let the offense get into position. Bride, over to Paison, he's going to try to go into the lane, loses the handle. Koval drives all the way down to just about the free throw line and pulls up, he gets two. And that is Elida's first lead of the night. They are on top, eight to six. Nice job by Koval to get in there and get that, sneak that one away. Koval, he's going to drive, works against McBride, and we're going to have an offensive foul. Jackson Koval that time lowered the shoulder a little bit to initiate that contact. And Will McBride did a nice job getting back to take the charge. Yeah, he's kind of setting him up, and, you know, uh, I, he might have should have gave that up, but good hustle, too, by Gabes to get all the way down there to take away that passing lane. And Koval had no choice but to go in. We got a little dipped his shoulder a little bit. Good job by McBride to sit there and take that one. So we have a couple substitutions into the game for Elida. Camden Howard has checked in as has number 23, Beckett Berkey, for the Indians. Berkey. Berkey just checks in. He gets two on the board. Elida tries to hurry up, gets it down to Edscorn. He's fouled. He's going to take a trip to the free throw line. You can see, Elida's pretty comfortable getting the ball down the floor. They get it out of the net. Good cut here by Berkey and uh, nice feed. But 
they get it out of the net really fast and push it up the up the court. David Escorn taking his first trip to the free throw line. He's able to connect on the front end. Scorn lines up his second shot. It is up. And this one is going to be short. Rebound down to Miller. Elida on top, 9-8. Just about four minutes left to go here in this opening quarter. See Keegan Wilson has also checked into the game for Shawnee. Yep. They're going to have an illegal screen. Ball's going to go back to the Bulldogs. Keegan Wilson kind of got his uh, leg out there on that little fade screen and uh, official called that moving screen. That foul's going to go on Wilson. That's his first. This is the team's third. Here goes Howard into the lane. Tries to get it off the glass. Can't get it to fall. Austin Miller gets the rebound. And then Howard just hangs on trying to slow Austin Miller down as he knew that was that Shawnee had the numbers up into the front court. Yeah. Kind of took a not a balanced shot, and he tried to make up for it, and uh, end up committing the foul. Now Shawnee tries to work on the offense. Offense, McBride had to go up and get that one, and they're going to say he had, he carried. So another turnover by the Indians. The ball's going to go back to Elida. It's their fourth so far this quarter. And some of this is, you know, getting the rust off, right? First game action. You can scrimmages, they officials are a little slower on the whistle and let them play a little bit more during the season. They uh, call the obvious there. Good to see Dominic Lynch out on the floor for Shawnee. The quarterback had an injury, had to have some surgery. He was able to get better as he's out here for game one of varsity play. Scramble for the loose ball that time, and Berkey just kind of lost where he was on the floor, and he reached out to grab that one, still had a foot out of bounds. So basketball's going to stay with Elida. Zori Island going to inbound for the Bulldogs. Tries to lob it deep. Austin Miller does a great job of reading that, takes that all the way in and slams it down. Yeah, that's like that's uh – that's trouble when you get out there and he knows what to do with it when he gets that close. Island that time just led Howard a little bit too much. Austin Miller able to use that quickness that he has. As you see, Island, though, doing a nice job working in the paint. Couple of spins. Not able to get that one to fall, though. Wilson over to Miller. Travel. Good Miller's call. Miller's going to get the travel call. That's the second time here in the quarter that Austin Miller has been called for that travel. Yeah, he's just a little too quick. It was a great shot fake, but as you can see, skips it out and gets down there and dunks it. Uh, they, Shawnee had another player that used to do that a lot, too, and now he's playing college basketball. George Mangus was really, really good at that, and I'm sure he taught Mr. Miller a thing or two on some of those. But it was a great job by Miller to tip that out and get out and put that one home. Tanner Roberts has checked into the game for the Bulldogs. He handed that one off to Seth Sharp. Cobalt for three. That one's no good. Lynch with the rebound. Almost loses out of bounds, able to save it. And gets bailed out that time. As Cobalt was running with him along that sideline, he tried to get gather in the loose ball, ends up going out of bounds. So Shawnee is going to get an opportunity here just around the half court line. Wilson thought, yeah, thought, thought Miller was going to go back door and uh, yeah. kind of a little rust there. So Coach Triplett's going to take a timeout. He wants to talk about it. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. John Stocker, DDS, is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Coach Triplett seeing one too many mistakes, wanted to take a timeout, try to gather everybody in. You know, we've talked about, obviously, opening weekend, the first game of the season for Shawnee, so knocking off a little bit of that rust, the miscommunication. 
coming out of the timeout, they force the turnover. And give it right back. And here's Island off the glass for two. As Elida goes back on top, 11-10. Nice pass. Gonna call charge. Good job. A little bit too much head of steam that time as Shawnee had some numbers for trying to get to the basket. Couldn't hold up. Gonna pick up the offensive foul. That one's gonna go against Wilson. That is his second. Engel, good job just setting up there, taking it. Good job. He was set for a long time, and Wilson made a nice pass. He just couldn't get stopped in time. Nick Pashon has checked back into the game for Shawnee. Ingo. Three-point shot on its way. That one's going to be off. Fight for the rebound down low. So Beckett Berkey end up going out of bounds, trying to get that basketball. It's going to stay with Elida. Tori Tom is coming back into the game, as is David Edscorn for Elida. Coach Triplett not happy with his post players about get in there and get some rebounds. They were just trying to out jump them and I don't think they're going to, that going to happen. They got to get a bot, body on them. Ooh, Engel almost, or Island about travel there. Good job. Beckett Berkey goes Berkey, up for yes. the rejection. He's able to take that one away from Colvault. And Torrey Thomas was quick over to deny Pashon as that one goes out of bounds. Going to stay with the Indians. Just going to Sub here, yeah, looks like McBride checked back in. You see Nick Pashon, he called for somebody off the bench, and he actually went out down that tunnel, so not sure if he got poked in the eye or had some blood that he needed to get taken care of quickly. So I think he lost his, uh, oh, like some fan found it. Actually, I think it was, it was a contact talk, that yep, got knocked it. out, so they were able to find the contacts. and <laughs> As a fan offered... Uh, <laughs> One of the officials is eyeglasses to find it. <laughs> Eagle Coach, eye down there. You can see Coach Triplett from the sidelines <laughs> hollering in, trying to get someone's attention. They yep. Trying to let them know what they were looking for. <laughs> now we're ready to go. McBride on the inbounds. Here's Freiberger Kick. working against Thomas. Gets into the corner to McBride. Ooh, uh, McBride got away. He ran out of bounds. That's a couple years ago. That was an automatic turnover when you go out of bounds. Nice play by Toby Freiberger as yep. he went in, made sure that contact was made as he was trying to get the shot up. Couldn't get it to go, but he is going to the free throw line to shoot two. See, so kind of got in there and goes up hard and gets draws a foul. Zori Island picks up his first foul of the night as Freiberger's first free throw is good. You know, we're kind of seeing some rust. Shawnee's seven turnovers, a lot of three, but Pretty true from the foul line. I think we've only missed one so far tonight. Even with the announcer, Jinx, he puts one in. Freiberg goes two for two. Shawnee back on top. 45 Quickly. seconds left to go here in the quarter. Ed score. Working down low, trying to get some space. Freiberg are playing good defense. Yes. Hands it off to Engel. Gets it back out. Here's Ed score over to Island. 32 seconds left to go. Elijah's is going to pull it out. May try to play for the final shot here of the quarter. Spread four corners here a little bit. Probably get Island here in a one-on-one -on -one -on -one situation, maybe set up a shooter. McBride with the defense. And he was trying to find Colvault. Ends up in the hands of nice. Miller. Miller with the great oh, move, but can't finish. finish. Rebound ends up back into his hands. Three-point shot on its way off the side of the rim and no good. So that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. After one, Shawnee's on top, 12-11. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is provided by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Second quarter just about underway from the field house. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Scott Mag. Pretty entertaining first quarter. We saw some of the normal miscues you see from, you know, the first couple of games, turnovers, offensive fouls, um, just, you know, some yeah. miscommunication back and forth, but a tightly contested game so far. Right. You know, we talked about the keys. We talked about identity and execution. And right now, I mean, Elida's trying to get their identity. They're throwing a 
trying to get the ball down the court really hard and they're attacking the glass is you know trying to get their tempo too it's just they're not really executing there's no really no flow in this game and so you see if they can get that fixed here in the second half kind of same thing with Shawnee they have seven turnovers in this first half there's no flow there's no tempo uh, how they want to play here's that scoring 4-3 that one's no good rebound down to McBride Breiberger brings it up the court for the Indians as all five Indians are behind the three-point line McBride drives had some nice. space in the lane nice job finishing on the left side of the rim for two yeah and he kind of threw that one up with his right hand Lucky Thomas got his hand in there and get that one down. <laughs> it's funny how he grabbed that. If the guys were bouncing off him. He's a he's a big man when he gets his paw on it. No one's taking it from him. Here's that scoring down in the corner. Angles working hard down low, yeah. trying to Freiburger get some space. Freiberger going battling all night here. Good job by Freiberger to just take that one right away from him, and then Etzcorn gets fouled. I think if I'm Elida, I'd like to get Thomas down there in the block. He, you know, he kind of went to work and got a foul there in the first quarter. He's kind of haven't gone down there since. That was a great move by McBride. You see, he kind of flipped that one up with his right hand and went over his shoulder and made that. That was a heck of an athletic play by him. So Edscorn gets whistled for the foul. That's his second. That's Elida's sixth team foul of the game. Here's Berkey. Gabes. Gabes with a three-point shot. That one's going to be no good as well as both teams are struggling from behind the arc. Can't quite find the shot. That one goes out of bounds. Going to go back to the Bulldogs. And with Gabes on Thomas, I, I just I think they've got a mismatch with him, you know, setting some sort of down screen and, uh, and kind of posting up kind of like he did in the first half. It just seems hard for Shawnee to guard him. Now here's Seth Sharp. Gets it down low. Atkins. Travis Atkins kicks it back out. Sharp. Going to drive. Tries to put it up. He's going to be fouled. Going to go to the free throw line. And this foul is going to go against number two, Boston Barker. That is his first, team fifth of the half. And Seth Sharp is going to make his first trip to the free throw line tonight. Kind of got away with he drug his pivot foot there when he caught it. Sharp able to make the first one. We have another substitution as Beckett Berkey is going to have a seat and Austin Miller checks back into the game. Berkey game good minutes off the bench there. Second free throw, no good. Rebound down to the Indians. Here's Barker. Barker gets the shot up and gets it to go. Good body control out of Boston Barker that time. Able to get the shot down. And Shawnee extends their lead to four. They're on top, 16 to 12. Atkins kind of wanted the ball down there in that post, and they just kind of dribbled away from him. Here's Island. Kicks it back out to Sharp. Sharp working against Barker. Barker cuts him off along that baseline, has to roll it back out to Thomas. Thomas has this one poked away by Miller and ends up out of bounds, going to stay with Elida. For a big man, he's got some skill, a nice little shot fake, and got Miller kind of not set, and he went around him, and luckily for Miller, he was able to reach around and uh, knock that one away. If not, Thomas was going hard to the rim. Island on the inbound, gets it over to Sharp. Sharp lets a three-point shot go. That one's going to go over the back of the backboard. So the ball is going to go back to Shawnee as both ten teams continue to struggle from behind the arc. As you see Jackson Cobalt check back into the game for Elida. Torrey Thomas is going to take a seat. Here's McBride working against Colval. It's a down low to Freiberger. Freiberger underneath the basket, kicks it back out. Saw the extra pass, almost thought about, but instead Brady Gabes keeps it himself, gets to the rim for two. You do a good job, Shawnee, of getting Freiberger in the post, and he does a good job. Either uh, he scores or he dribbles around the defense and hits an open three-point shooter, and they shot fake and try to get to the rim. 
Three-point tries on its way. This one's no good. Rebound down to McBride. As Camden Howard couldn't quite find the range. Long pass over to Barker. Finds a cutting McBride high off the glass and in for two. And Elida's going to want to take a timeout now and talk about it. So Elida's going to take the full timeout as you see McBride high off the glass. Good, good cut, good give and go. He threw it ahead and fouled the ball up and a uh, great job by Barker to get it right to him. We will be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Last two trips down the floor, Elida's come up empty. Elida or Shawnee taking advantage of some of those miscues. Yeah, absolutely, and they're selling for some outside jumpers, coming off double screens and kind of not misbalanced threes, and a lot of times, sometimes bad threes lead to layups on the other end, and Shawnee does a great job. The long rebound threw it ahead. Got some easy baskets. We'll see if uh, Elida gets something going to the rim or somebody with their feet set, not coming off a double screen and turning. They're kind of shooting when they're in the air. See, as you can see, too, as you get them layups and you get the defense gets a little bit more aggressive and it looks like Elida's going to have to call a timeout. Yep. As Bryce Angle ended up on the court trying to protect the basketball. Ah, yeah. Shawnee trying to find the, trying to look for the uh, tie up that time, but Instead, Elida gets the quick 30-second timeout to try to maintain possession. And obviously, Coach Tabor not happy with that offensive possession after coming out of that timeout. Take a look at last season for Shawnee. We mentioned this is a much different squad from last year. They finished 15 and 7, 6 and 3 in the WBL. Had a couple of nice wins over Wayne Trace and Bodkins. Ended up a five seed before losing to Napoleon in the district semifinal. For Elida, a little bit of a rough season in Coach Tabor's first year. 3-19, and 0-9 oh in the WBL, but their three victories came over Bath, Coldwater, Van Buren, and they ended their season in a sectional semifinal loss to the same Napoleon team that Shawnee was knocked out by. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's just trying to get a new new thing going here and see what's happening. And um, Nice. Nice. Working the baseline that time. This Camden Howard on a nice inbounds play. And he's going to be fouled. I believe that's going to be Berkey. Austin Miller. No, it's Berkey, I believe. Yep. Beckett Berkey. Uh, uh, yep. He kind of jumped that. He, you know, thinking it was a handoff, and he jumped to try to help. And uh, good job by Howard. He faked the handoff and went to the rim. And Berkey was on his hip the whole time. Easy call for the official to make. See Howard not able to connect on the free throw. Beckett Berkey, the freshman. The only freshman on this varsity roster for Shawnee, getting quality minutes in his first varsity game. So Camden Howard makes one of two free throws. Shawnee goes quickly. Nick Pashawn comes down. He's able to connect at the basket. Right back. And Elida Sharp. As Seth Sharp comes down, yep. he scores two. As it is now a 22 to 15 game, 3:45 left to go here in the half. And Elida sure does love throwing that ball ahead on the sideline. They love that sideline break, and they get up down that court pretty quick. Lynch finds Berkey down low. Berkey tries to go under the basket. McBride gathers the rebound, and we're going to have a foul, but it's going to be prior to the shot. So Shawnee will have that under the basket, but it's actually going to be a one and one. As that is going to be the 17th foul for Elida. Kind of seen Koval and and Sharp. They really didn't get out. They didn't close out, and they didn't get their feet set. They kind of reached and grabbed. And good job by McBride to recognize that and tack the glass. They've been in, they've done that the last three or four times down the floor. So elida has got to do a better job of closing out and getting their feet stop top, stop penetration. Will McBride not able to connect on the first of the one and one? Zori Island going to try to push the pace. Here's Cobalt for three. This one goes. Big three-point shot by Jackson Cobalt. The difference is Cobalt sprinted down the floor and got his hands and feet ready, caught that pass, and knocked that one in. Almost a turnover that time, but it ends up back into the hands of the Indians. Off the feet of McBride. Shawnee gathers it back in. Austin Miller finds McBride underneath, and he's able to put it in. McBride does a great job of hanging out by the rim. Etzcorn charged. Yep. 
This was a problem that Elida had last night as they were called for quite a few offensive fouls on charges. This is their second of the night as Ed Scorn just got right in. Yeah, Berkey did a good job of yeah, he did a good job of like sliding his feet and staying straight up. And Ed Scorn, uh, unfortunately, he should have jumped straight up. He jumped into him, trying to get to the rim and committed the uh, foul. That's his third. So David Edscorn's going to go to the bench with three fouls. Shawnee comes back up. Beckett Berkey working against Angle gets it over to Miller. And Peshawn now going to drive, loses it. Cobalt does a nice job of getting his hand on there without picking up the foul. And now it looks like Dominic Lynch is going to get called for the foul. That is his first, team's seventh. So now Elida with the one and one opportunity as Seth Sharp is going to make a trip to the free throw line. So Brady Gabes come back into the game for the Indians, as is Toby Freiberger. Freiberger, yeah, he's probably going to take out Lynch. Seth Sharp making his second trip to the free throw line this quarter. Able to make his first one. He is now one or two for three, excuse me, in the quarter. Has four points on the game. Second shot is up. This one is good. 24-20, Shawnee on top, under three left to play here in the half. Wilson, back into the game, trying to run the offense. Coach Tabler on the sideline, coaching hard, coaching the defense up. See, Torrey Thomas has come back into the game for Elida, guarding Beckett Berkey. Angle. Working against Gabe. Gabe's, Gabe's yeah. a great job of going towards yeah. the baseline, able to finish with the right hand. Shawnee's done a, there he is, there's Thomas. He's just a load down there. It's very difficult to guard him. Causes a foul, but Gabe's does a good job of getting by and with the right hand when he's behind the uh, backboard. Helps slow coming over for Elida. Got to get that fixed the second half. Austin Miller's whistled for the foul as Torrey Thomas is at the free throw line. Shooting the one and one. That one's no good. Miller comes up with the rebound. He pushes it ahead to Berkey. Berkey gets fouled hard by Thomas, but able to finish. The freshman is showing no signs of nerves. He is aggressive going to that basket. He's able to get the end one. Got the rebound, push it ahead. Good job by Berkey to get out and went hard to the rim and kind of got hit on the head and Good aggressive. Shawnee from the last half of this quarter have been catching and really just attacking the rim. Taking advantage of a lot of rotations are a little slow and getting to the rim and scoring at will down there. Beckett Berkey lines up his first free throw. And can't get the end one to fall. Angle comes up with the rebound for Elida. Under two left to play here in the half. Tory Island, Zori Island dribbles around Miller, pulls up in the lane, can't get that one to go down. Gabes comes up with the rebound, going to push the pace. McBride works against Colvault. Colvault does a great job, get his hands in there, knock that one away. By my count, Shawnee has 22 of their 28 points inside the paint. So they have really, really, really attacked the paint against Elida, and Elida's got to get that fixed here in the second half. Here's McBride working along that block. Can't get it to go. Angle comes up the rebound. McBride almost rips that one away. Island was in some trouble, but spins out, uses his speed. Going to try to get down the floor. Nice pass. Drops it off to Thomas. Thomas with the nice hesitation. Yep. Gets that one to fall. As Brady Gabes found himself off the floor, Torrey Thomas gets the contact and the and one. Great head fake here. Watch this little shot fake, get him off feet. Waited till he's on his way down, one up, one through him. Good move. So Torrey Thomas gets his first points from the field. Another two points for the night came from the free throw line. Thomas gets a free throw to go. 
Now back down to a five-point game, 28-23. Here's McBride, works baseline, goes against Thomas, high off the glass, that one's no good. Fight for the loose ball, McBride gets it. Berkey's gonna send up the three-point shot. No good as Angle goes up high to get that rebound. Elida good moving shot, quick. Colvault with a great move to get himself a little closer but can't get it to go. And we're gonna have a foul, it looks like maybe we're gonna have a push on maybe Angle it looks yep. like. So we're going to take a trip down the floor for the one and one. Complete this case there a little bit. That is Bryce Angle's second. And actually, that is going to be the 10th team foul for Elida. So Shawnee will shoot two free throws. Koval did a great job. You know, he made that three, so he knew the defense was going to come running out. He did a great job on the shot fake and got by him. But then the shot, he just kind of he just kind of threw it. He didn't get that up and out. It was kind of more of a line drive shot. Uh, rushed himself and uh, didn't make it. But he did everything right except put it in the basket. Well, McBride continues his hot shooting here in the quarter. As he now has seven points. All seven of those coming here in the second quarter. Going to line up his second free throw. It's on its way, and it is good. 30 to 23, minute left to go. Dangerous pass, but Angle able to gather it in. Shoots from the free throw line. Cobalt missed time to jump, jump, but Thomas was wow. there to for the putback and gets it to go. Pashon for three, gets it to go. A big shot by Nick Pashon. The first three-point shot for Shawnee. First actually made shot outside the paint for Shawnee other than a foul shot. Nick Pashon now with seven points in the half. Eli or Shawnee on top, 33-25 as Elida looks like they're gonna be content to just take this final shot of the quarter. Shawnee kind of was in a 1-3-1 one, one look, now they kind of morphed into a 3-2, man-to-man -man maybe. Good job Here's by Zori Island working against Freiburger up top. Zori Island gets the three-point shot off. No whistle, and that's going to bring the first half to a close. Shawnee finds themselves on top of Elida, 33-25. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our halftime adjustments are presented by Laux Chiropractic and Weight Loss. Laux Chiropractic and Weight Loss offers area residents good health through chiropractic care. Nate Garlock alongside Scott Mag and Scott, what are some of the adjustments that Elida needs to do to try to keep this game close and get themselves back into the lead? Well, just, just kind of totaling up some of this unofficial stats, right? I have Shawnee's 12 of 15 in the paint, right? So what Elida's got to do is they got to get over and help a little bit better um, and um, keep Shawnee turning the ball over. That's what's keeping them in this game. Um, Shawnee's got to stop fouling because Elida's got nine of their 12 Nine of their 25 points from the foul line, just like that. See Will McBride doing a great job attacking the rim Whoa, to get the scoring started here in the third quarter. Torrey Thomas down low. And that is one thing that Eli has done really well here yes. in this game is once Shawnee has scored, they have not wasted time to get back. And usually they've been able to have an answer. That time, no answer for uh, as Thomas missed. But right now, Shawnee's possession. They Missed their first shot, able to come up with the offensive rebound, though, as McBride resets the offense. Yeah, they've just been attacking the rim with vengeance and been pretty successful all night. Here's Pashon. Oh, good job. Has this pass poked away. Cobalt drops it off to Escorn. Escorn works against Miller. Austin Miller does a great job timing his jump to get that rejection without picking up a foul. Good job. He's got such long arms, and he just went straight up. Watch Edscorn's coming here. Great pass by Colvall, and Miller jumps and kind of erases that one. Zori is going to keep possession as Zori Island's going to take the inbound. Drops it off the angle. Here's Cobalt up top. We've seen Elida get slowed down a little bit when they've had to get into these half-court sets. Corey Thomas sends a three-point shot. This one's going to go behind the backboard. It's going to go back to the Indians. Elida seems to have done much better 
here in the, uh, or at least in the first half when they've been able to get out and run. Yep, and uh, give Shawnee credit that they're kind of taking that away and making Elida run some sets, and, and they're not really comfortable. They want to get out and run a little bit, and they want to get some easy baskets. Miller attacks the rim, can't Good get job. that to go. Gets his own rebound, though. Put back, goes down for two more. What I'm impressed with Miller is how quickly he got off his feet. Right, he missed that one up and went back up and got it before Thomas can get off the ground. Good job by Miller. A great athletic move that was. Tory Island pulls up for two. That one's no good. Tory Thomas comes up with the rebound. Can't get the put back. Austin Miller now going to push the pace. Drops it off to McBride. McBride all the way in. And we're going to have a blocking foul. This one's going to go against Zori Island. It's going to be his second team's first of the half. Good job by Shawnee oh, pushing man. it three on two. I know Zori Island doesn't seem to like that call, but yeah. you could see down at the end him turn to twist as he mm -hmm. wanted to try to get that contact. Sure did. Because uh, good job by McBride. He was kind of – Island – Kind of anticipated where he was going to go, and McBride kind of jumped sideways to get past him, and therefore Allen kind of spun and caused a block. Well, McBride's first free throw is no good. And Shawnee's done a nice job of keeping Zori Island in check so far tonight. Only four points to coming off of a 16-point game last night against Bath. McBride's second free throw. Bounces off the rim, off the backboard, and in. Good job by Wilson. Keegan Wilson, he knew that sideline break was coming, and he about got his hand in there to take on one away, and Bride's going to get his hands caught in the cookie jar for a foul there. So that was going to be the first foul on the night for Will McBride. Shawnee's first team foul of the second half. And Jackson Cobalt's going to take it out of bounds for the Bulldogs. Seth Sharp is checked back into the game, hands it back off to Cobalt. See Elida just trying to find an opening. Here's Island. Works around to the right, gets into the lane, spins around, has to kick it back out into the corner. Here's Camden Howard. Has to get rid Cobalt. of it. Cole Vault oh, able to gather that one in yeah. and gets it to fall. What a heck of athletic move. He kind of ducked his head to get under the defender and make that. 38-27, Freiberger with the head of steam. He's going to be fouled. And looks like this one's oh, also going to go against Zori Island. Kind of he kind of moved his head a little bit. I guess he didn't duck. It was away from Berkey to kind of twist his body to keep the ball away. It was a heck of an athletic move in midair. He turns. What I liked about Freiberger there is uh, he didn't get run off the ball. He, he made sure that he controlled where he was going, and he controlled where, the, where he was going. Good job by Berkey to attack the rim. How about Beckett? Berkey yep. takes a three-point shot, no good, follows his shot, gets the rebound, able to finish it for two, and we're going to have a foul on the other side. We'll push it ahead. There it goes. He got the ball, and he looked to see the defender. It's coming, and he attacked the glass. Good job by Berkey. Kind of saying before was uh, what Freiberger does is, you know, he he got Island on his hip and he kept him there, right? He kept getting into him. He didn't let he didn't let Island run him off the spot. He controlled where he was going. Island gets the ball right back after the inbounds, gets it over to Ed Score. Lida trying to speed up here in this half court set. Good slip by Howard. Howard finds himself all alone down low and able to put that one in for two. Kind of had a little double screen on the backside, and he slipped it and went right to the rim, and they found him for an easy basket. 40-29, Shawnee still on top. It's Austin Miller works against Cobalt, gets into Sharp, and I think that's going to be Sharp. It's going to pick up that foul, his second. It's just straight line drives has just been killing Elida tonight. It's just they got to help up instead of their helping over, and their help's just a half step too late. I know they want to pressure, but they're getting they're getting beat straight line drives. They got to maybe back up a little bit or move those feet so they don't get whipped off the dribble. That's shown for three. This one's going to be off. Lynch comes up with the rebound, but has it poked away by Colvault. Officials are going to talk about it. See who touched it last, and they're going to say last touched by the Bulldogs. 
You know, you know Elida wants to be a running team. We talked about it all night. They want to push the ball to the floor. But they got to do a better job, too, is boxing out. They've given up seven offensive rebounds so far. Can't run unless you get the basketball. Gabe's almost lost it as Austin Miller was trying to fire a pass down low for Dominic Lynch, but a little bit of a cross-up that time. So out of bounds, going to be another turnover by the Indians. Number 12 by my count. Got to get that cleaned up. I'm sure Coach Triplett's not happy with that. Reach in that time by Brady Gabes. Knocked the ball out of bounds, but it's going to stay with Elida. 4.17 left to go here in the quarter. Long inbounds pass. Pashon able to get his hand on it. But can't track it down before it goes out of bounds, so it'll Good stay hustle. with Elida. Great hustle. He's got his hand out there and now kind of flipped the court. Now they got a full court here and they can put the pressure on and see if they can get something, maybe get a steal and get a layup close to their basket. Robert's going to have to hurry. Yeah, Roberts really doesn't feel comfortable down there with the basketball. Cobalt. Cobalt. And we're going to have a timeout from Elida as that 10-second count was creeping up slowly. So we're going to have a full timeout by Elida. We will step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So Elida takes the timeout as you take a look at the Elida student section and players here all business tonight <laughs> trying to take care of the Shawnee Indians but currently find themselves down 11, 40 to 39. I like that when student sections have themes. That's pretty cool. Koval, nice take. Going to get a charge. Good job by Berkey stepping in and taking that charge. I don't know, he might have been under the basket, but. I think more than anything on that call, it was the fact that I think since Koval took off so far away. Pretty sure. Kind of came down on him, but I don't know if we're, I didn't really see, you know. I don't, they don't have that in uh, high school, but I wish they would develop that because in that little circle, because a lot of times guys just set up there and. That's very tough when you take off like he did. He took off from the basketball, and Berkey was standing underneath the rim waiting for him to charge. But give him credit for standing in there and taking it. Seth Sharp picks up the foul on the other end. That's his third of the night. As that is already the fifth team foul of the second half for the Bulldogs. That's just give them credit for trying to make a play, trying to make a play for their team, and unfortunately getting a little bit too far too much of the arm and causing some fouls. Pashon drops it off to Gabes. Gabes works it around to Berkey. Beckett Berkey having a great night for his first varsity game. Lynch, Lynch in through move. traffic. Can't get that one to fall, though, Lynch as Gabes comes up with the rebound. He's going to fight through some traffic, but he's going to be found. Kind of let Lynch go all the way, and then uh, didn't they forget to go get it. And Shawnee's just the 50-50 balls. I think Shawnee's probably won the vast majority of them tonight, and uh, Elida's just a half step slow, and maybe that's because uh, Shawnee maybe have fresher legs since they didn't play last night. Who knows, but Elida's kind of half step slow on some of them balls. Camden Howard is listed with that foul. It's his second. Pashon tries to get into the lane, kicks it out. Gabe's for three. This one's going to be off. Nice box out by Tanner Roberts, comes up with that rebound. Tommy did a great job of boxing out, so he learned the lesson, I guess. Zori Island is trying to do too much. A lot of dribbling that time, and unfortunately lost his footing. That one goes out of bounds, going to go back to the Indians. Yeah, I, I, you know, he's just trying to make a play. He's just trying to be, you know, he's very, very quick and trying to make a spin move and he just kind of won a little bit faster than what he could bring the ball with him and kind of dribbled off his foot and went out of bounds. Now here's Keegan Wilson, who's come back into the game, drops it off to Freiberger. Shawnee now still with an 11-point lead. Long pass to McBride. Working against Edscorn. Good job by Edscorn to keep his feet and not go for that fake. Good job by Freiberger, too. The, you see him posting up. He does a heck of a job for a guard. He does a good job of sealing and they went a little high-low action with him, and he sealed, and they threw it inside. I didn't see who uh, made that pass, but they made a heck of an entry pass down to him. It was a great little play there. 
You see it on the proof play. It looks like Gabe's made a one-handed pass, and that's a nice, nice pass. Zori, Zori Island got whistled with that foul. That's his fourth. fourth yeah. yeah. I think a little bit of frustration coming out for Zori Island as yeah. he's going to have to take a seat. Shawnee has made his night very difficult as Toby Freiberger makes his first free throw. And it's his first point since the first quarter. Just does a lot of the good, the little things, right? He, he handles the ball when they need him to. He plays defense. He rebounds. Freiberger now four for four from the line. As Shawnee stretches their lead out to 42-29. Bride knocks this one out of bounds. It's kind of Freiberger there in help position, ready to help. Here's Thomas working down low. And good no call by the officials. That was a flop and good job by Thomas. But quickly the other end. Long pass out to Freiberger. Freiberger now. Thought about getting it down to Cutting Wilson, but has to pull it back out. And here's McBride out to Gabes. Gabes for three. No good. Just a little flat. Had the right shot. And just Cole Bolt that time just trying yeah. to do a little bit too much with yeah. the basketball. Turns it back over. Wilson, he's going to drive. He can't get it to go. And now we're going to have a foul. This one's going to go against Brady Gabes. It'll be his second. Colville did see one, he's seen Etzcorn cutting down the floor, but you know, when you kind of go late across the middle, there's always going to be someone coming. And Wilson, Keegan Wilson did a great job hustling back and being part of the play and made himself a, a steal. Sometimes when you play fast, you do see some guys and you try to make a split decision. And unfortunately, it was late across the middle. Shawnee. Full court defense. Yep. They get Cobalt trapped down there. Leads to a turnover. Nice pass. Keegan Wilson trying to get this one up off the glass. Can't get it to go, but he's going to make a trip to the free throw line. Freiberger probably could have took another dribble and got all the way in. He's left-handed. He probably could have finished on the other side of the rim, but watch this. He gets a steal here. He could have probably won all the way. But instead, he throws it back to Keegan Wilson, who basically helped get that steal. And good job by Freiberger. Keegan Wilson not able to connect on the first free throw. That last foul went against Jackson Cobalt, his second. And as you see, Tanner Roberts take a seat for Elida. Elida kind of half step slow. We talked about this early in the broadcast. And therefore, they've committed a lot of reaching fouls because they're not there in time, and they've committed eight fouls already this quarter. Thomas one more time, gets, drops it off to Angles. Angles able to get that one to go. Good job by inside out stuff. That That is another way to get back in this. And good job by Torrey Thomas to throw it back out to the wide open guy. Bryce Angle with his fourth point of the night. Makes this a 10 point game, 43-33. Shawnee on top. Schoen gets all the way to the basket, but that one hangs on the front of the rim. Before coming back out to Elida, here's that score. Good job by Miller, cut off penetration. Got a That's piece of that one. Jump stopped in the lane, and as he's going for the rebound, that one went out off of his leg. See Bryce Angle, nice pull-up jumper, gets that one to go. It's a great pass by Torrey Thomas, kind of drew a couple guys to him and hit the open man. Good unselfish play by that young man. Charge, yes sir. And Good job by Engel, step up and take that. Toby Freiberger is gonna pick up his first foul of the night. It's gonna be on a charge as he went right into Bryce Engel. Tried to stop, but I don't think he couldn't stop there. He was coming. Less than a minute left to go here in the third quarter. Shawnee on top, 43-33, but Elida trying to cut this to single digits before Got we it. head to the fourth. Right, they're hanging in there, being scrappy, and they're hanging in there. You know, they no quitting. These guys still only down 10. Here's Sharp over to Engel. Engel's trying to get it down to Thomas down low, but good defense by Miller. That's going. He's going to wow. drive. He took it right to the teeth of that defense from Shawnee. He took some contact. He's going to make a trip on the free throw line as Austin Miller is going to get whistled for this foul. And Etzcorn, they, they met at the rim there. Etzcorn exploded to the rim, and Miller was not having it. So 
that's Scorn able to get that first free throw to go down. That's his second point of the night. As the junior lines up his second free throw. This one's on its way. That one's no good. It's a good hustle. Ooh, almost got it. And Sharp able to take this one away. Sitting there. Engel. Engel a little short on that jumper. Lynch comes in for the rebound. Austin Miller now. 12 seconds left to go. Berkey reverses it back to Lynch. Lynch over to McBride. Six seconds. Shot on its way. This one's going to be no good. Rebound down to Elida. As Somebody lost his shoe. Looks like McBride lost <laughs> his shoe. Working so hard, ran right out of his shoes. So Boston Barker not able to connect on his three-point try. Elida comes up with the rebound before the stoppage of play, but just seven-tenths of a second left to go. Not a whole lot in the playbook for this one. Going to try for the long inbounds and for a touch, uh, touch shot of some kind. Yeah, here's the kind of just slip right out of it. Usually you see that when someone steps on it, but yeah, not right. that time. McBride just kind of came right out of his shoe on that one. So that is going to bring the third quarter to a close. Shawnee on top, 43-34, but Elida's making a run. When we return, we'll have the fourth quarter on WOSN. John Stocker, DDS, is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Fourth quarter just about underway here at the Elida Fieldhouse. Shawnee and Elida. Right now, just a nine point difference with the Indians on top. Throwing out some, uh, looks like shirts or something in the crowd, to both sides. Nope, towels, yep, towels. Mercy Health towels. <laughs> Mercy Health, the sponsor for this year's tip off. Is Tip-off looks a little different with LCC still playing in the state semifinals, but Shawnee, Elida, and Bath still trying to make it happen. Elida starts with the ball here in the fourth quarter. Thomas down low, has that one knocked away by Austin Miller. Thomas tracks down the rebound, gets it out to Howard. Howard with the big three-pointer. That'll help. Good hustle by Thomas to go get that one down and hit a wide open Howard there in the corner and knock that one in down. Just a six-point lead for the Indians. This is the closest Elida has Hello. been since about yeah. halfway through the second quarter. And we have another turnover by the Indians as Elida is going to get an opportunity to get to get even closer. And that was a, kind of a freshman mistake that kind of baited him into taking that drive, and he got, a, got him behind the basket, and he kind of got his feet tangled up and turned that one over. Here's Cole Vault. Oval pulls up for two, no good. A little bit of a mistimed jump that time by Brady Gabes. Going to go out of bounds. Thomas about got over top that and got that one. None of the Indians that went for it touched it last, though, so they're going to be able to get this possession. Here's Wilson. Wilson into the front court. Austin Miller haven't said his name too much here in the second half. The Indians would like to get him going for sure. Legal screen. And Brady Gabes, he's going to get whistled for this foul. Yeah. That's his third. It's amazing how you hit a knock down a couple shots and that defense gets a little bit more intense. And especially when you get a moving screen and, you know, starting to get this fan base back into it. It's, you know, we got himself a game here with 6.55 to go and Shoney up by six. It was kind of almost on the verge of blowout time there halfway through that third quarter. But give Elida credit, they hung around, hung around, kept doing what they needed to do and kept fighting. Cobalt working against Link, drops it off to Sharp. Sharp finds that score. Ed score. He's going to drive into three defenders. Good job. Can't get that one to go. Nice strong take, though, but Beckett Burke comes up with the rebound. Good defense there. They had two guys. Good back screen by Lynch. That was a great cut. Good find by Berkey as well. Dominic Lynch with his first two points of the night. Much needed basket for the Indians. Edscorn with the drive. That one's no good, but it's going to be a foul. This one's going to go against Will McBride, his third. 
That also is going to give Shawnee 17 fouls, which means both teams will be shooting free throws for any foul for the rest of this game. Brad kind of bailed him out. He was going away from the basket. One hand shovel shot and uh, McBride just kind of ran him off. If he just stayed solid, I don't know if he had a chance of making that. David Etzcorn makes his first free throw. This is his third trip to the line tonight. His first two trips, one for two, made the first one each one of those, but not able to connect on the second. So we'll see if he can end that trend right here. Get a couple, a little bit of sweat and some water off of the court. Yeah. You know, it's a, if he makes this, he at least get Elada in their press. Allows him to sub, look, trying to get Angle in for, again, press. So it does allow him to get him in, and he's going to come in for Torrey Thomas, who's played a good two minutes there in that fourth quarter. He's done good things. He set some good screens and got his help open. Six minutes left to go in the game. Shawnee on top, 45-39. Trying to hold off this rally from Elida. Lynch yeah. drops it off yeah. to Beckett Berkey, but we're going to have a foul on Dominic Lynch as Dom went up. Uh, too much contact. He's going to pick up what will be his second, or excuse me, his third foul. If you look, that was a great job, but he has to leave his feet, and Angle was a heck of a job of selling that, man, I tell you. Might have got himself an Academy Award, but nonetheless. Koval dribbles out of trouble, drops it off to Edscorn. Edscorn for three. That one's going to be short. But Howard comes up with the rebound. He lied able to reset. Koval thought about a three-point try, decides to drive. Jump stop off the glass and in. Four-point game. Here comes Lynch on the other end. He's able to get it to go. I was going to say that might have been forced, but good job by Lynch to Euro step and get past somebody. And Koval was looking. Good Euro step, one, two, and up. That was a heck of a move by Lynch, but it was about a one on four there. Lucky that one in. They want to, coach would rather work a little bit of clock and see what they got. When they've been running and running their sets, they've been getting wide open shots by Berkey right here. And Berkey not able to connect on the three pointer. Angle comes up with the rebound. Pushing up the side. Ovalt for three, no good. McBride comes up with the rebound, passes it ahead to Miller. Miller touch pass to Berkey. Berkey tries to find Miller on the return. A little bit too high. Looking for the highlight dunk that time. And they can't connect. Yeah, and again, you know, they see that on the NBA, they see that, and you know, Miller can get off the ground, but boy, two on one, I'm sure every coach in here would rather him just get to the rim, jump stop, lay it off, and then have him dunk it, but I know that's not as crowd pleasing as that alley -oop lob would have been, but I'm sure they would have rather had the two points. Here's that score, able to get it out of that corner. Sharp finds Escort now on the wing. He's going to try to drive. Gets the shot up. Can't get it to go. Freiburg comes with the rebound. Long pass ahead to Miller. This time, Miller able to finish. And he gets out in a hurry. Back to an eight-point game. Lida needs some points. Under 430 left to go in the game. Wilson's done a great job on Koval or even on her. Or Etzcorn, whoever he's been on, he's done a great job of keeping him out of the lane and making him settle for jump shots. Torrey Thomas working against Austin Miller. Thought about the three-point yeah. shot for a second. <laughs> but, but you hear the coaching staff, no, no, no. Here's Sharp. Sharp working Tough against shot. McBride. Gets the shot oh, good up. Hustle. No good hustle. Ends up into the hands of Thomas. Thomas drops it back to Sharp. Sharp does a great job creating some space. Able to put that one in for two. Engel, Engel working hard to get this one. Here it is, Miller going hard. Kind of laying it in. Good job by the camera crew getting that one. Zooming in way from way up there in the top. 
Back to a six point game, Shawnee still on top. We are under four to play here in the fourth quarter. Toby Freiberger brings the ball up, gonna work against Zori Island. He drops it off to McBride. Now Austin Miller, gonna work with the left hand. Oh, good job by Torrey Thomas to go get that one. Got his hand in there and run that one down. That's a heck of an athletic move for the big man. Zori Island kicks nice. it into the corner. Escorn for three. This one's good. Big three-pointer by David Escorn to make this a one-possession game. Great job of getting in into the paint, jump stopping, get Edscorn feet set, knock that one down. That's the best shot he's had in a long, best look he's had in a long time. So we have a Metzger financial timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back, John Stocker, DDS is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So Shawnee coming out of the timeout, find themselves with just a three-point lead as Elida at one point down, 13 have climbed back into this game to make it a one-possession game. Yeah. Just fighting, 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 not giving up. They were almost uh, dead in the waters there in that third quarter, but they kept fighting, they kept fighting, and got that back within three with three minutes to go. They just won a heck of a game here. They got back in by playing good, hard-nosed, aggressive defense and pushing the ball to the floor. Austin Miller for the drive, kicks it out. Pashone, his shot goes, but nobody marks. Keegan Wilson, yeah. a Keegan big Wilson. offensive rebound as he gets the put back in for two. Also, Elida's done a good job of not getting that straight line drive. They've been making Shawnee become jump shooters, and they just haven't made many, and just forget to box out Keegan Wilson. Here's that scoring. Had the big three-pointer a little while ago. Drops it off to Sharp. Sharp with the three-pointer. Both teams have struggled behind the line, but here in the fourth quarter, Elida's coming alive. Yeah, and, you know, he makes some threes. Now let's see what the defense can do with the crowd behind you. Just a two-point game now, 51-49. Nick tough Pashone shot. gets wow. a tough shot to go down. He's halfway behind that backboard to make that. That's a heck of a shot. Oh, nice pass. Here's Sharp, up and under, can't Great. get it to go, but Thomas, Thomas is there for the putback. Goes and get it. He came straight down Broadway to come get that one. Good job by Torrey Thomas not to give up on the play. Now Toby Freiberger up top. Gets it over to McBride as the offense gets set. Oh, Pashone good read. Has his pass picked off. Here's Cobalt off the glass, but too hard. Can't get it to go down. Nick yeah. Pashone comes up with it. Yeah, he's worried. Freiberger for three. That one's too hard. 130 left to go. David Etzcorn, he's going to drive against Austin Miller. A little bit of contact, but no whistle. Etzcorn can't get it to fall. And Will McBride comes up with the rebound. And during the rebound, Ed scoring too much contact, gets whistled for the foul. Yeah, there's Pochon. It's a great shot behind there. And, uh, these are a couple Torrey Thomas working hard underneath, getting that rebound. Miller didn't really want to get in between him, try to box him out. Torrey Thomas working hard. Here's, here's kind of that foul. Miller kind of set him up and tried to take a charge. And, Missed it in a little frustration, one over top of McBride. and McBride's first free throw goes down. Still a one possession game. I'm gonna call a timeout, Shoney, looks like. And we are gonna have a timeout on the floor. It's gonna be a 30 second timeout as Coach Triplett wants to talk about it, so we'll keep it right here. Scott, you know, at times, it looked like Shawnee was about to run away and hide from Elida, yeah. but Elida has done such a great job staying into this game, giving themselves an opportunity. And you mentioned it coming out of half, that free throws have been a big difference in this game, especially keeping Elida close with how many they've made. But it might be free throws and steals just for Shawnee. Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and what a good thing Shawnee or Elida has done is they made Shawnee jump shooters, right? They took away the paint. Shawnee was attacking the glass at first, and especially that second quarter. They made him a perimeter jump shooting team. They haven't really made much. They boxed out and they threw the ball ahead. Um, and they have really attacked and set up shooters. We'll see if they continue this as last minute 25. 
to attack the paint and get shooters where their hands and feet are ready to, to catch it and shoot it. Done a wonderful job here in the fourth quarter. Will McBride makes the second. Back out to a two possession game, 55-51. Minute 24 left to go. That's Gorn. Drops it off to Island and moves it around to Cobalt. Island's going to try to drive with nice. the left hand off the glass. That one's no good. Thomas with the big offensive rebound. Yeah, good job. And go get it. Edscorn, good job. Good shot fake and not shooting that and forcing that one up. Run a little clock here. Island getting in the lane. He just didn't get it up high enough. Did a great job of jump stopping. Good fake. Colvert. Cobalt, excuse me. Colvault with the fadeaway after yeah. the jump stop. Gets that one to go down. A tough shot. And we're going to have another timeout as we'll stay here as we check it out on replay. Jump stop, he faked, got the guy to go by him, kind of jumped back and got a nice little shooter's touch to go in there. We'll see. So we'll take a look at some upcoming schedules next Friday on WOSN at 8.30. Coldwater versus Minster Girls at 10 p.m. Shawnee versus Crestview Boys. And then at 10 p.m. live on WTLW Sports Report. And then also next weekend at 11 p.m., Bluffton versus OG Boys Basketball and WTLW. And then on Saturday at 7 p.m., the Ottoville versus Columbus Groves Boys Games. And then at 10 p.m., Delphi St. John's versus these Elida Boys. So a lot of upcoming games on the schedule as we have turned the calendar. We're bearing down on December. Girls basketball a couple of weeks underway already. You know, Scott, I know OG got underway last night, had a couple of games already. And then you take a look at the boys. On, this is the first weekend. And game seems like games almost every night. It's a great time of year. We still sure got is. some football going on in the area as well. And just got to love high school sports. Absolutely. And WSN does a great job of bringing that to you. You can be able to watch all the good games and all the close ones right from your seat, just like this one. So we'll see what Elida can do here on defense as they find themselves down two. They need a stop. Here's Beckett Berkey up top against Thomas. Gets it over to Austin Miller. Miller wow. going to go baseline. Moves around wow. Zori Island wow. and gets it in off the glass. Yeah, that was a great job. Oh, Island was there, but Miller did a heck of a job to jump past him to get the basket. Zori Island trying to score quickly. Ooh. Spins in the lane. Has this one rejected. But Torrey Thomas, as he has been for most of the second half, in the right place. Keeps the possession alive. Seth Sharp with the head fake. Gets that one to go. We are back to just a two-point deficit, 57-55 with 10 seconds left to go. And watch this, he jumps past him. Look at that, that is a heck of a move to go to your left and shoot it back with your right hand. Not many in this area can do this, and good job by Sharp to get in the lane, jump stopping. Berkey didn't want to foul him, and he just went through him to score. Elida probably has to get a quick steal. Shawnee's upcoming schedule here. They got at Crestview at St. Henry at Bath, but Elida's probably going to really, really, really deny hard, and I would bet as soon as they get it in, they're probably going to foul and see what happens. You can see Elida's upcoming schedule there as well. And next weekend, they have Spencerville on Friday night, Delphi St. John Saturday, then the following week against Kenton. We will have that Delphi St. John's game on WOSN. Thing is, is they got Berkey taking it out, so they got a lot of trust in the freshman to take the ball out of bounds. My guess is going to be something to Smith or look for somebody to set some sort of up screen and somebody going long. I'm sure Elida's in there talking about who yeah. it is that they want to foul. You don't want too much time to come off the clock, go for the trap quickly, see if you can get the quick turnover. If it's not there, going to have to foul to send somebody to the free throw line. Or I just made two. Freiberger was two for two. I don't know if you want to trust Miller. I guess Pashon is if you get it, but Pashon comes open. Yeah. He's free down low. He does. Or I'm sorry, that was Freiberger. Freiberger. Excuse me. Yep. So he is going to take the trip to the free throw line to see if he can't make this a two possession game. Now going offense to defense and a bunch of guys at the table. We got Shawnee's best or a couple. Better defenders coming in, and you've got uh, Elida's offensive guys. It'll be Freiberger's first free throw. Rattles around and is no good. Lynch, Lynch is over there to scores table, trying to take Freiberger's spot. 
So no matter what, at this point, Elida will have an opportunity to, at worst, tie this game up. Here's See. a mismatch down here. Cole, Cole Vault's down at the bottom with Miller. Miller has some good hops. He better make sure he boxed him out. And good, good job by Cole Vault to, to make sure he boxed him out. Freiberger makes the adjustment, gets a second free throw to go down. So with eight and a half seconds left to go, Elida's going to have possession to try to time oh, yeah. or try to tie this game up as we are going to have a full timeout by Shawnee. No, I, I think that was Elida's last one. So we will step aside and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Looking for the perfect gift for an out-of-town sports fan? WOSN can now be streamed anywhere in the world online on Roku and Apple TV for a $100 annual donation. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign up on app.wosn.tv or by, by downloading our Roku and Apple TV apps. So eight and a half seconds left to go. Elida's got to go the length of the floor and try to get off a decent look at the three-pointer. Sharp gets it into Island, he's gonna go quick. Zori Island gets fouled as Shawnee had no fouls to give, but it's one and one. So you send him to the free throw line, they can't win it from there. So Zori Island's gonna go and shoot the one and one and Elida's gonna have to strategize. And uh, get in there. So he's gonna have to make the first. The first one's the most important thing and, and then Potentially, I don't, you know, I don't know if he uh, will miss the second one on purpose and they'll try to tip it in or make them both a quick foul. We'll see. Here's Ori Island. First free throw on its way. That one's good. So now we'll see what Coach Tabler wants to do if he wants to take a good shot here. And if you make it, great. If you miss it, hopefully get the tip in or if you try to miss it on purpose. Thomas is down there. He's had some big rebounds here in the second half. That free oh, throw is no good. Had Thomas it. had it in his hands. It goes out of bounds. Yeah. They're going to say stays with Elida. Good job by Thomas to go get that one. And Freiberger knocked it out of his hands. So 3.4 seconds. Ball out of bounds. So they're going to run, run a set. We'll see how uh, Shawnee defends this. So Zori Island's going to have the inbounds. Good job by Thomas. The just kind of the push. The freshman underneath, and, and Freiberger knocked it out. Shawnee's going to take timeout. Shawnee wants to take their last timeout to set things up, make sure that they're set for things on the defensive side. It's their last full timeout. And we will step aside as well. When we return, we'll have Elida's final shot. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is provided by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. So Shawnee takes their last timeout. Elida's out of timeouts as well. As we have 3.4 seconds left in just a two-point game. Zori Island's going to pull the trigger for Elida on the inbounds, and we'll see what they drew up. I guess it's going to be... Screen, Ed scoring going up, and he's going to come off a double screen right here. It is. Oh, good slip. Oh, Dominic Lynch. Lynch was there for the challenge. And the officials are going to say a little bit too much contact as we check out the replay. That was good. Good call. Lynch got a little bit of his arm. I think Dominic would have been all right if he hadn't kind of swung yeah. through that time on that challenge. That's what the official saw, so Camden Howard gonna go to the free throw line. First shot is good, big free throw by Camden Howard. No timeouts left by either team, 1.5 seconds, so uh, Shawnee's gonna have to get it in, probably one, maybe two dribbles, and let it go. We'll see, Lida, well, they'll probably want them to, if they do make this, to have to come back to the ball to catch it. Camden Howard for the tie. Shot is good. We are all tied at 58 with one and a half seconds left to go. Elida found themselves down big here in the second half and now with an opportunity to force overtime. Long pass for McBride. Gets knocked away. Berkey gets it, but that oh. one's going to be off and we're going to head to overtime. Shawnee and Elida are going to need some extra time to settle this one as they're all tied at 58. We'll step aside and be back with overtime right here on WOSN. 
Welcome back. John Stocker, DDS, is tonight's premier sponsor for the Atlanta Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Nate Garlock alongside Scott Mack here at the Elida Fieldhouse. Shawnee and Elida couldn't get things settled in regulation, so we had to overtime tied at 58. And Scott, you have to be impressed with what Elida did there in the, in the second half to get back into this game. The adjustments that Coach Tabler made and some big shots down the stretch by a couple of different Elida Bulldogs. Yeah, and they just kept fighting, kept fighting, kept fighting. And like I said, they stopped the straight line drives and made them become jump shooters. And uh, and they boxed out well and, and did enough just to get themselves back in this game. So four minute overtime underway. Will McBride gonna find Freiberger down low. Freiberger turn around, jump shot, no good. Angle comes up with the rebound. Zori Island playing with four fouls, gonna bring it up for the Bulldogs. All the momentum right now with favors Elida. Let's see if they can capitalize on it. They just run, they've been running this a lot, this double screen, and they just slip one of those big post players. They got Thomas down here. Here's that scoring for three. That one's no good. Rebound comes down to Freiberger. A tough shot. Freiberger up ahead to McBride. McBride had that one poked away by Island, but gathers it back in. And he tried to get to Freiberger, but good hustle. Good hustle play, yeah, exactly. Brady Gabes. Yeah. That one looked like it was destined to go out of bounds. <laughs> he kind of came out of nowhere to snatch that Absolutely. one up. Absolutely. Nick now drops it off to Freiberger on the wing. Reverse the ball, ends up in the hands of yeah. Austin Miller. And Miller all the way to the rim for two. And they're kind of going back to what they did in that first half, attacking the glass. Elida goes quick, angle down yeah, low. He's going to be fouled by Brady Gabes. Gabes. That'll be his fifth. Good job here, though. When Miller going down the Broadway, no help. But good job by Elida to get it right back in. And here comes Island straight down the floor. Got in the paint, hit angle, and got a foul. So Beckett Berkey checking into the game as Brady Gabes is now fouled out. He'll have to take a seat. Angle's free throw is no good. Bryce Angle four points on the night, but this is his first trip to the free throw line. Second free throw on its way and good. Kind of short on that first one. A lot better that one. Sharp in. 2.43 left to go here in the overtime. Shawnee on top, 60 to 59. Sharp has done a great job of coming in and give him a spark off the bench. He got 12. Shawnee looking to open up the season with a victory. Mm. Elida trying to go 2-0 and oh on the young season. Some miscommunication that time. Mm. Going to go out of bounds. Another turnover by mm. Shawnee. Eerie familiar than the first time that Berkey was in, and he did the same thing. They Miller went back door, and he threw it out of bounds. He just kind of turned and winged it and didn't watch what he was doing. Now here's Cobalt. Nice spin move, gets to Ooh, the basket. Block. Can't finish, rebound comes down to Shawnee, up ahead to Pachon, Pachon able to finish off the glass for two. Pachon now puts his team up three points, 62-59, two left to go here in the nice overtime. Pass. Good, Tori Thomas three fakes. Thomas showed good patience but couldn't get it to go. Austin Miller with the rebound and we're gonna have a foul. Good hustle, and they're pushing the ball ahead and call foul. Fashion with 11 points on the night. Only trails Austin Miller and Will McBride for leading scorer. Sharp committed his fourth foul, so three guys with four out there for Elida. To Miller, first free throw is no good. Kind of rushed that one a little bit. Miller mm -hmm. made one trip to the free throw line in regulation, but that was way back in the first quarter. Keegan Wilson checks in. Second free throw on its way. This one is good. Took his time a little bit more on that one. Looked a lot better than the first shot. Two possession game now, under two left to go in the overtime. 
Dory Island working against Wilson. Nice. Jump stop, hesitation in the lane, gets that one to go. Back to a two-point game. And Zori Island now has seven points on the night. Good job of getting in the paint, jump stop, and gathering himself and going straight up. Knock that one down. And, and now that time, and that's twice. Austin Miller is saying, door, I yeah. was going to go back door that time. And as he started to, the pass goes out of bounds. Another turnover. Yeah. There's a jump stop, gathered himself, kind of jumped away from the defense and knocked that one down. Zori Island now brings the ball up for Elida as they are down two. Minute 10 left to go, Sharp. That's Gordon ends up with it on the wing, working against Freiberger, tries to drive, has to pick it up his dribble. Looking for somebody to get it to, ends up in the hands of Zori Island. Island. Ooh, that's Tried to pass. slip to Thomas, who had got him free down Ooh. low. Elida fortunate to keep that possession. Yeah, that would have been a tough pass. Might get him to his left hand. He's pretty good going that way. Zori Island been frustrated at different points tonight. Had a couple offensive fouls. Been playing with four fouls for quite some time. But here in overtime, drives with the left hand high off the glass, gets the contact, and now going to take a trip to the free throw line to put his team up one. Yeah but they let him get to his left hand. I mean, they opened up and let him go hard left, and he gets that step going left. He's going right to the basket. Shot is up, and it is good as Elida finds themselves with the lead for the first time since, I believe, back in the first quarter. They are on top, 64, 63, 40 seconds left to go. Berkey down low, goes up high, puts him back up one. 30 seconds, each team with timeout left. 65, 64, back and forth we go. Let's see if they get Thomas going to his left hand. Tory Thomas feeling it with the left, can't get it to go, but Tory Thomas was there for the putback, can't get it to go down, fight for the loose ball. Jump ball. Zori Island has it, they're gonna say jump ball first, possession and the possession Elida. arrow favors Elida. So Elida was not happy with the call, but believe that they're going to be okay and once they know they're going to keep this possession. There was a lot going on underneath there as Zori Island was trying to keep the play alive. Yeah, him and Thomas were working hard. And Coach Tabler is going to want to take a timeout and talk about it. This is their one timeout in the overtime with 13 seconds left to go. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Shawnee on top, 65-64, 13.8 seconds left to go. Zori Island tries to pull the trigger on the inbounds, gets it over to Engel. Kind of confusion here. Coming out of the timeout, Bryce Engel's just going to drive, gets to the rim, and they're going to say contact on Austin Miller, so Bryce yeah. Angle is going to go to the free throw line to shoot some free throws. That's confusion. They kind of wanted to go. They got the ball to Angle, and he kind of was looking for it. Looked like Zori Island, and uh, they did. A, Shawnee did a great job not letting him get it. So he turned and went to the rim. Smart thinking by him right here is he just kind of just put his head down and went, kept going, kept going, and. It actually looked like Austin Smith Miller kinda, just kind of yeah, lost his footing yeah. there. His back sure foot did. slid out from underneath him, so he took, a, face. Yeah. Yeah, he took a hard fall that time. But either way, Bryce Engel going to go to the free throw line, try to tie this game up, and maybe even give his team the lead. First free throw is good. We are tied at 65. And now it's going to be Shawnee who takes the timeout. They're going to want to set up for what they do after this last free throw. 6.7 seconds left to go here in the overtime. You know, it's been a back and forth game. A lot has happened. You know, at times it looked like this could be an easy victory for Shawnee. He lied to them, never went away, and it's kind of been the same story here in the overtime. Shawnee started off hot, pushed it out to a two possession game. He lied to though. Not wanting to go away, continuing to chip away at it. Some miscues by the Indians. And here we are with six seconds left to go, and Elida has an opportunity to go on top. <laughs> yeah. He just kept fighting, kept fighting, kept fighting, and believing in each other. And you're right. Just, they got a chance to come away victorious here to make this free throw and, and defend. But still, there's a lot of time left, six seconds. Um, I know before they Freiburg got in the lane and 
found a wide open Berkey, so that only took a couple seconds, but you know, still a lot of time yet. He's still got to make foul shots. Look to see if they probably miss it. It's probably going to be fouled instantly. It's probably going to be your Smiths or Berkey coming away with the rebound, so I would bet they would be fouled instantly, but no, they're going to put somebody off. Well, now they're going to put Etzcorn there with four fouls. Bryce Engel now. An opportunity to take the lead. Free throw is good. Elida on top one. Both teams out of timeouts. As we see Amari Wass check into the game for the first time tonight. Berkey rolls it out. Freiberger. Oh, nice back door. Oh, he missed the layup. Had it. And the officials are holding as they call a foul. They called a foul as it looked like, I believe that was Berkey who wrapped up Zori Island. And we'll see how much time they put back up on the clock. We saw McBride come free along that baseline. Had a great look yes, at the right layup. Here's, here's the back door. Walsh kind of deflected him and then. And then the foul comes with almost Island, two yep, seconds right left there, to go yeah. still. Because if not, then that might be a turnover as Island quit dribbling with time still on the clock. That could be a mental mistake as well. Right. So they're going to put 1.2 seconds left on the clock, and I think that that's still a little short from uh, yeah, where it was. See. So we take another look at it here. McBride gets it down off the side there. Island comes up with the rebound, and you see the foul right there with two, two. seconds mm -hmm. left to go. So the officials, though, put 1.2 seconds left on the clock. Zori Island's going to be shooting two free throws. You know, and for the officials, shots, yeah. too, you know, yeah. we have the benefit <laughs> yeah. of instant replay. Where Absolutely. We can do that. They yeah, are trying yeah. to do it on the fly. Yeah. You know, no one's trying to short uh, Shawnee on, on purpose as there's still some talk about the clock. Looks like they have it figured out here. So Zori yeah. Island not going to shoot his two free throws. Yeah. Kind of line of in a 2-2-1 uh, or 2-2 press. Basically, each guy got a quarter of the of the court. And might be best for him to I was miss just gonna, this one. I was just going to ask, Scott, do you tell him to miss it yeah, on purpose well, and hope I, for a long probably rebound? wanted him to make the first one. And then I would put these two guys, the first two guys, up a little bit closer and have him miss it and put somebody on the foul line. Don't foul them. Yeah, and there he, he goes, misses it. it on purpose. Got to grab it, got to shoot it. No. Doesn't get it off in nope. time, and that is going to do it as the Elida Bulldogs pull off a huge come-from-behind victory, and they knock off the Shawnee Indians 66-65. Elida opens the season 2-0 for the first time in quite a while. Yeah, and uh, it's good, good pressure. Uh, you know, the WBL and Northwest Ohio has got to come be aware that Elida, there's no quitting. Elida, they're going to keep playing hard, keep playing hard, keep playing hard, and they're going to play right to the end of the game. And Shawnee kind of found that out. They kind of got complacent there. They got a big lead in the third quarter and just kind of put on cruise control, and Elida never stopped, came back victorious tonight in overtime. So we will step aside. We'll be back with our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. We're being joined by head coach Matt Tabler. And, Coach, congratulations. A big win tonight. You know, talk about your team a little bit and just what it meant to be able to come back when you guys found yourself down big there in the second half. Our kids have a lot of fight in them. They have a lot of grit. Um, we had to go through a lot last year. We went through a lot of adversity. When you're building a program, um, you got to get kids to buy in. And it's not, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, the process of build, putting our system in. And um, I have a bunch of kids that are bought in. Even after going 3-20 and 20 last year, um, they continue to work in the spring, the summer, and the preseason. And... Um, they have, they have a lot of fight in them, and I'm just very proud. That's their win. You know, they just showed a lot of heart. Like you said, down 11 or 13 in the fourth quarter, and we could still come back. 
And so I give all the credit to our kids. And that's one of the things we talked about you know, on the broadcast. You know, at times found themselves down big, 13, 14, 15 points at one point early in the game. And then even in overtime, down two possessions, but they never stopped. You had guys step up big in big spots, guys like Zori Island, Seth Sharp, a, a bunch of different guys. Even Torrey Thomas maybe didn't score a whole lot, but came up with some big rebounds when you needed it. It really did seem like it was a full team effort tonight. It really was. And, and you, you, you mentioned two guys that probably are more of a role player for us. And um, Cam Howard hit some big free throws to get us to over time and then Bryce Engel hits free throws to win it in overtime um, but you know each of these guys have each other's backs no one gets jealous of anyone out there and that's why I really like this group we also understand that this season is a, a marathon and not a sprint this is the first weekend um, but it sure feels good to start out 2-0 yeah, I'm sure it does. You mentioned last year, you know, there's some trials and tribulations, you know, a little bit of growing pains, putting a new system in, a lot of new things going on. Not sure if you knew this or not, but the first time Elida has knocked off Shawnee since 2017. It's been a while. Moving forward, what does this do for the program as you are still continuing to kind of build, get things in place, and getting these guys moving forward? Well, it's a process, and we're still young. Um, you know, we don't have many seniors on this team. We have a lot of guys with some varsity experience, but they got to continue to get better. Um, every day we preach to get better. Um, they can't let this get to their head. The coaching staff will make sure. We have a tough ne weekend next week with Spencerville and St. John's. And so we, we just got to be prepared. And sometimes when you get younger guys, um, inexperience or, you know, inconsistency. And so we have to be consistent. So that's what we're really going to preach to them this, this coming week. All right. Thanks, Coach, for your time. Appreciate it. Big win, 2022 tip-off champions. Big step for the Atlanta Bulldogs. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, being joined back in by my broadcast partner, Scott Mag. We're going to take a look at tonight's Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. You can check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page from tonight's game. And, Scott, we talked about it during the break. There was a lot of guys we could have gone with. We mentioned a, a bunch of names with Coach here, but when it came down to it, we felt like the energy that Seth Sharp made really had an impact. Absolutely. He came in off the bench. He supplied energy. He got in the paint. He set up guys. He scored inside when he needed to. He brought up the defensive intensity, and you know, when he got in, we talked about it over and over and over in that second half. Shawnee was kicking their butt. They were going into the paint, their straight line drives. When he got in, they kind of took that away, made them jump shooters, you know, and a lot of that had to do with, with uh, Seth Sharp coming in and playing the good defense and, and getting guys shots. So he brought energy and brought what he said, resilience, and they know it's not a sprint but a marathon, but those guys sure played their tails off there that second half. You know, at, at times wasn't what you would call maybe a work of art, but Elida, they did, the, you know, you talked about having to make this game, uh, you know, kind of down and dirty, and Elida did that. They got stops when they needed to. They played aggressive. They did things the right way, and they just kept grinding. This team did not quit, and say what you want, and no, no matter what happened during this game, Elida did not quit, and that's a great quality to have in a team. Absolutely. They're going to win a lot of games ugly because they're just going to keep working, keep working, keep working, and sometimes when you do that, you win ugly. The ugly, and they don't ask you how; they ask you how many. And you know, right now they got two of them. They don't. They didn't ask how. You know, they can tell everybody we're two and zero, and it doesn't matter how you do it. It's just like you get it done, and they got it done tonight. So that is just going to about wrap it up for here from for us here at the Elida Fieldhouse. Elida is your 2022 tip-off classic champions as they knock off Shawnee in overtime tonight. I'd like to thank our entire crew, everybody working back in the truck, working the cameras, everybody back at the studios. Thanks for everything that you guys do. We appreciate it as always. For Scott Mag, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night, everybody.